be it. But it's there to protect the astronauts in the future. Let's talk about it, MT. Let's talk about your deep space technology further. First of all, what are you trying to do with outer space? Explain it to us. With outer space, we can go to moon and back in two to five years in less than two hours. Landing, takeoff, everything included. Sounds like Richard Branson would be interested in what you're doing. Oh, Mr. Richard Branson is beyond belief. The guy, I don't even believe in the guy anyway. I can tell you what about the about Mr. Sir Richard Branson. If I tell you, do you remember before this, you started the interview, I told you about Stephen Hawking and his crooked jobs? Yes. His peer review control that how we gave a paper for the, how black holes leak and in April of 2004, and I told you, I gave you the reference number, on 7th of July 2004, I received a letter from Astronomical Royal Institute of Astronomy of United Kingdom. We cannot publish this thing. And Mr. Uh, Hawking announces on 8th of July, I'm going to announce something very new. I changed my mind. How come he didn't change his mind till I submitted a paper for publication which was refused to be published and is kept in the Royal Academy Institute in London, according to the letter, you can go and ask for it. I explain how black holes leak. It's the same with Mr. Sir Richard Branson. He knows we have communications with him. He knows what we do. He put what they call the Earth Challenge for CO2 capture. Right. We have developed the technology where we can convert CO2 into solid state at room temperature and create energy. And he said in his interview, nobody has come forward for anything for CO2 capture. And then they send us an email that your case has been refused. How come? At least we are the only one there. It shouldn't be. Nobody has come in, huh? So forget about that situation. But in any case, with our space technology, we can go. We don't create propulsion to get to push ourselves to somewhere. Once we find our position, when we go out of the atmosphere, we create the matching field, the same as I explained to you how we retract the radiation from Japan's radi radioactive materials. We create a matching magnetic field as the planet or the destination we want to be in a space, could be Mars, Moon, anywhere. Because the mass of our system is much lesser than theirs, we get attracted to them. So the speed goes beyond the talk. We don't need the space. The, the gravitational pull of the moon will pull you much faster than you can pull. NASA uses something they call it slingshot effect. But it does. When you, a slingshot effect is when you put it in there that you can get pulled. But if you create the magnetic field as strong and in parallel line, the pull is so rapid that we estimate Mars to moon or Earth to moon in less than two hours return journey. I have to ask you about your level of confidence. You sound... Why welcome? Because I have systems. I don't need the confidence. I'm not talking theory. I have a system physically. We have shown it. That's what my system does. In another thing is tested. The Iranian government has announced it in past six, eight weeks that they have their spaceship program. It uses our technology. It's not a joke. The only problem is, and I always said, the Iranian Space Agency, NASA, Russian Space Agency, Chinese, and every other government who's involved in the space technology have to get together now and sort something out because you can land crafts anywhere in the world at the moment with the technology in the hand of Iran that nobody can even detect. I go back to what I told you about the energy. We have a dynamic magnetic field around our system. We can create, put 1,000, 10,000 people on board of a craft, ship it and plant it right in front of the White House that none of your radars, none of your technology can show there is such a move because this is a dynamic. It literally absorbs the radar frequencies and it just chocks it up. It never comes back for it to be shown. So if it nullifies the radar frequencies, isn't that considered a potential for a national security issue, and that's why they're watching you? Uh, you cannot do because it's an energy system. It's a space technology system. As, some, as one of the, what do you call it, American naval officers, of the, the American Navy does a lot of research in the space and that kind of thing. In my meeting with them in Seoul, in South Korea, about two or three years ago, they said to me, very simple, you are doing things which we are imagining to be done. But the problem with you is that you have systems which shows it how it's done. Yeah? Yes. 
So we are solving a solution for what people have been looking for. So in a way, we are not creating defense technology. We are showing that the world has moved to the next step. And very soon, the borders are man-made. There were no, no borders centuries ago. So it means that nations have to come together and come to an agreement. Chinese can move millions and millions of people once we release technology in full. You can find millions of Chinese in the morning in front of Washington. Huh? That's because wild. they want to have the same lifestyle as you have. The airline industry definitely should get involved. <laughs> the airline industry doesn't want to get involved because I can give you the name of officers at Boeing. The top management in Boeing knows. They've seen the videos of our work. They have seen our system outside their offices in Brussels. They didn't want to move it in. I took my system to the office of the Prime Minister of Belgium when I came back from... I didn't go to them. They called and they asked for a meeting for me when I came back from Tehran. They wanted to speak to me. So I went to the, to the office of the Prime Minister with the system. This is the system. I took it to the professors and the university lecturers. I said, this is the system. This system does. And what it is, this is my videos. You can check. You can have my system. I told the Boeing, I said, have the system. If you want, I'll give you the blueprint. Huh? What did they say? It's not. Oh, exactly what I told you. We have invested billions in all these 747s and their upcoming systems. We cannot lose so much. But it doesn't matter. They, they don't lose because, in a way, I can tell them, as I told somebody very recently, put one of my systems in the jumbo jet, reduce the weight to less than a ton, You'll need less fuel, but you still use the same construction. What'd they say to that? That would be great. That would be great, but somebody can put that in the sense of the directors of Boeing and, and, and Lockheed Martin. I have non-disclosures. I've been on conference call with the top scientists at Lockheed Martin in their offices in London. You're a courageous all man. Know what's happening. You're a courageous man. No, we all know what's happening because the game energy changed. I, I enjoyed one thing. I enjoyed one thing and what made me to collaborate with the space technology with Iran three years ago. When I spoke with one of the senior advisors within the government, he told me one thing which really touched me with heart. And he said that maybe this technology will bring peace between us and America and then they realize we are not what they are trying to make us in the world. And he said, I hope that will be the day when your technology brings peace to us. Yeah? We all know what's happening. Some of us know. A you lot know, of us know. Yeah. A lot of us know what we tolerate. Let's talk about the reality of disruptive technologies, even if they're fantastic and they change life and they make life better all over the world, okay? And the future of humanity and the planet. It's still disruptive. It's the reason that Boeing said to you they cannot afford to use it because they have invested billions. Have you thought of how a transition plan might look for a civilization that's already invested everywhere in other things that are not as useful, but they're entrenched in it, they're invested in it, and they don't want to get out of it? What kind of transition plan so that they can see that this other alternative route has an economic incentive for them? Have you thought about that? Yes. The transition time, this is what keep on telling me, why don't you show your system? Why don't you release your energy? Why don't you release your medical? We are aware of what damage we can do in the short term. We are fully aware. We are not uh, people who are there just to show something and run. My biggest problem is I want my technology to be used that not even a single soul to get hurt by it, be it financially, be it medically, or whatever. At the same time, we have as a scientist, as an organization, as a cash foundation, we have to listen to the governments of the world. How we can implement this, how we can be... The cat is out of the bag. The technology is out. The biggest mistake they made with my technology, they let me free for too long that I could teach and write papers and books and go to Iran and develop, and at the same time develop my medical technology, wake up a dead woman who was... They were switching the machine off to a live woman. My technology, the cat is out of the bag. The solution is, let's sit, let's talk, and see what are the outcomes. With me, we'll sit. I will ask for the Iranian government officials to sit on the same table. As I ask with the Americans, I ask with the Chinese and the Japanese and the, uh, what do you call it, uh, Russians. 
They have to find a solution and implement it very soon. 